Good morning, everybody. I am trying to get to grips with this new bloody gimbal camera that I've got. It's a spectacular device. Um, but my intention today was to come to Oldham. I'm here. Uh, if you're just wondering where, if I can get this bugger to work. Yeah. Um, I'm actually at the back of Blue Court. Now, the reason why I'm here is I'm doing uh, Oldham Retail and Business 1949. So we're where we are now. We put these, uh, try and get this bugger to work. Nope, oh, we're going up. <laughs> Let's go down. So yeah, we're at um, the top of the edge. Uh, yeah, so we're at the top of Oldham Edge and uh, this is where the rope and twine used to be. It looks like the school have taken over the site now, but rope and twine, they used to make rope, twine and cordage. Uh, I think they've made it from something called jute. There's something on the floor there and the flies are all over it, it's vile. Yeah, something called jute. Uh, rope and twine was a massive employer and it sort of looked out over Oldham as you can see. I hope this camera's making some sense for you. It's um, it's a bit of a bugger to get used to, um, but it, it does really let out some beautiful pictures. These steps, by the way, that you can see, I always used to think of them as like the exorcist steps when we used to live on Shaw Road. And just down there is Shaw Road. Can you hear them beautiful birds? Also, um, there's another, I'm trying to get this frigate to work. Ah, here we go. <laughs> it's flicked onto me. Oh God. Got the old classic. We've got the old classic there. The, um, rubbish that you seem to get all around this area. But anyway, this is where the rope and twine was. 1949, there was a, a book produced by Oldham Council. I've got a copy of it, first edition. It's a wonderful source of information. It's a really interesting read. I'll put a copy of it in the video, so if you want to try and get a copy, you can. I think it's fairly rare. Um, but yeah, it's fabulous. I mean, really, you don't really need to worry too much about it because I am going to be, um, again, I'm going to be researching from the book, doing my own research in my own special way. Um, before we go, let's just get a look at the... Blue Court School, someone's been sucking them. The thing is with this camera, it literally will focus on one thing and it doesn't matter. I'm moving the camera up and down. I'm actually facing the floor and it trains, trains on its subject. You've got the Oldham Civic Centre in the distance. Let's see if we can get a few of the old There it is. Can you see it? I don't think this camera's got a zoom focus for zoom feature, which uh, it's a bit unfortunate, really. I don't know if we can get one on. It's got all these different gadgets that you have to get for it, but there it is. Tom and Senshaw Blue Coat School, built in eighteen. I think it was opened in eighteen thirty. The Oldham Civic Centre is going to be coming down soon and there in the distance is the trusty teague so what we're going to do now i think we're going to fly down to grieve street and union street because there's a couple of businesses on there that did um that well that were about years ago and i don't think they're there anymore so in fact i'm fairly positive on that one so let's get down there then Right, if everybody recognises this place, this is Greaves Street. So just over there, you've got the Town Hall. Town Hall was built in two sections. You've got the front section, which was built in the mid-1800s. And then this section here at the back that you're looking at was built in... I'm going to have to move the keys because they're going to go down that grid. Uh, yeah, this section that you're looking at was built in late 1800s. And the architect who um, designed this building... Uh, incidentally also did the war memorial that you can see up ahead just in front of the church the offices were on um what's it called that street up there what's it called Bloody. yorkshire street that's it anyway the reason why we're here is we're going to talk about mr firm 
Now, Mr. Thurm apparently had a plan for everyone's kitchen. Um, now, they had offices on here. I'm not too sure where. I'm sure I could probably find out. I did a bit more research than I might do uh, before the video gets edited. Um, as you can see at the moment, we've still got the old bill, which is quite a popular restaurant for quite a few oldmers. And then you've also got uh, a no-class tattoo studio. That I don't know if that's open today. I'm not going to put my camera in the in, in the front of it. But then you've got the disgusting new library down at the bottom, which is vile, and uh, the old telegraph office, which is just here on the corner. Um, anyway, oh, that's interesting. We've got over that door there. We've got some. We're going to have a look at that in a minute, if I remember. This is the Youth and Community Education Service. It's part of the um, Lyceum. Anyway, let's get back to it. So yeah, on this street you had Mr. Thurm. Now Mr. Thurm was very keen uh, to make plans for your kitchen. He says, kitchen planning becomes easy when you call in Mr. Thurm because of the simplicity and flexibility and the clean design of modern gas equipment, gas cooker, gas refrigerator, gas water heater and gas washing machine can so easily be placed exactly where you <laughs> Remember that we used to have them. It's eighties, didn't we? Get a blasters. <laughs> oh God, where they will be more more handy and most efficient for long years of good service, low running costs, and unobtrusive good looks. You cannot do better to plan a kitchen around bass, around gas. Uh, gas Oldham Gas Undertaking Constitute of the North West Gas Board offices, Green Street, Oldham, and showrooms in Marketplace. So the offices were somewhere on here. Um, let's have a look at that above the Lyceum door. It's got someone's initials in it, can you see? Let's just move this up. S-A-S. -S. And uh, I'm really fuming about that. Look at that, some absolute K-N-O-B has decided to write on this ancient door. What an absolute buffoon. Uh, the other thing that was on here was Oldham's Water Board. They were proudly announcing that they were um, putting quality water into people's homes in Oldham. Now, as I said, these adverts were from 1949 out of the Oldham book. It was, um, of, it was actually to commemorate the first hundred years of Oldham. Um, but anyway, listen, let's get on to our next stop. I'm just making my way to our next stop, everybody. And uh, I just wanted to draw your attention to this, really. So, I don't know if you're on Oldham, made in Oldham, but Chris Loftus put a post on. And he took a photograph of the front of the Lyceum. And I don't know if you can see it. I'm sure you can. Can you see the trees or the bushes that are growing out of the top of it? Well, let me tell you something about this Lyceum. Oldham obviously look after the building now and quite rightly so it was a building I think it cost about £18,000 to build back in the 1800s it was built mainly with the funds of people like John Platt and um, his brother um, and they were basically instrumental in getting this building built anyhow um, it's one of the only buildings that we've probably got left in Oldham that is sort of half used from that era um, but true to form as you can see the building's being left to rot have a look on Chris's page made in Oldham if you're not already a member of it and uh, just see what people are saying about it I think it's shocking and I don't see why someone can't go up on that roof and just literally put down um, you know some weed killer just kill them off rooted into the building then what will happen we'll close it down then the roof will come off then the pigeons will come in and then obviously they'll knock it down and put a car park there that's the usual stuff isn't it sorry i'm on i'm on one today anyway um we've got to make our way down past the other building in Oldham that's got trees growing out of it which actually was built by a really um well, a fabulous architect. I can't remember the guy's name, but he was a fabulous architect. I think he also built Bolton Town Hall. 
uh, or the clock tower at least. Uh, but as you can see, that one now is overgrown with trees. There's pigeons on the roof, there's pigeons inside. It's overrun with rats. Um, it's all boarded up. People go in and graffiti it. And uh, yeah, that's left to rot as well. So they'll be able to knock that down soon and then build something equally vile, like the building at the side of it. But anyway, we're going to make our way down to 15 Union Street because I want to show you what was there a few years ago. I just wanted to say as well, that church in the distance, I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head now, it's got a wonderful name, quite a long-winded name. Um, I am going to go and film it <laughs> as soon as I can. Um, I need to get in touch with the vicar. As you've seen on my channel, I do quite a lot of the Oldham churches. I've done Waterhead, I've done Oldham Church. More well, recently, I did St Thomas's in Werner. Uh, what else have I done? St John's in Wordsworth, but you can't get in that because that's shut in the 80s, but it's used for storage now. I've done others, I'm sure I have. Anyway, I am going to go and do that. It'll be the first Catholic church that I'll have done. So I'm going to get in touch with the, uh, with the priest uh, and see what I can do. I wonder if that's old on football there. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, um... Let's get down to number 15. Right, everybody, we're now on Union Street. We've just made our way up to number 15. Number 15 Union Street is now where uh, Santos is. Uh, that's the place I actually go to every now and again. But used back here in the day, in 1945, there used to be a business called Duncan Fireplace. Um, we've seen the advert, it says they'll be better off with a Duncan fireplace. Uh, it's two Indians smoking a pipe around a fire. Um, so yeah, you've got a 12 month guarantee, you've got over 300 in stock. You have uh, modern and spacious showrooms and this can suit all pockets. Now it was a panel member of the CUJC service and showroom appliance people. Just giving you a bit of a view up and down there. Some fellas doing some work. Yeah, they also had um, showrooms on Brunswick Street as well. Uh, they've said you may walk around without any obligation. And direct or through all registered builders. So I went a bit quick there. So there you go, Duncan Fireplace. We're going to make our way down to number 56 now because there's a building. Uh, sorry, there was a business there that I would like to show you. What are your thoughts on how Union Streets have changed over the years? Right everyone, so um, back in 1949 there was an advert placed in this book by the Oldham Electric Light Company or the Electricity Showrooms and they were saying, uh, they were putting on display a machine that apparently used to, it used to power all the um, I love your media, it says the magnetic machine which produced the electricity light in the Oldham experiment over 70 years ago it was driven by the engines at the old Priory Mills. Thus, the textile industry assisted in the birth of electricity and electricity has more than repaid. Electricity has more than repaid the debt by its ever increasing service to the textile industry, Oldham and elsewhere. Now, just across the road there where that used to be the job centre, just outside of Brunswick Square, I'm pretty sure that that's number 56, which is where it used to stand. It goes on to say, the North Western Electricity Board appreciates the honour of sharing in Oldham's centenary celebrations and intends to maintain and improve electricity services to industries and home of this great cotton town. The board staff are eager, to, eager for your help and call on you on all electrical matters. Call at or write to the electricity showrooms for advice and information. Right, everybody, I know this isn't in the book, but we're well going past it, so I think, sorry, let's put it in. This is the site here of the old Cat Whiskers. Um, used to be a pretty good night spot in Oldham, I'm left to believe. It was a bit before my time, but my mum used to go here. They used to have a, a, a night for kids to go in. And, um, yeah, they used to cater. Obviously, they weren't allowed any alcoholic drinks. But... Um, well, this is where it was, and you know what? For a time, you used to be able to see the tiles that were black and white in front. We'll go over now and just see if there's any chance of it. I doubt it, but we'll have a look. 
Looks like the floor's been dug up. This is the new job centre. Did I, did I mention that? And this street here is Peter Street. So, where we are right now, around this area is where St Peter's Church was. Because that was just off Peter Street. St Peter's, obviously. Uh, but let's just see. Get this bleeding camera to work properly. Yeah, so it's all been cemented over. Oh, right. So, um... You know, because I'm addicted to shopping, I'm going to uh, just quickly nip, in, nip into TK Maxx and I think what we're going to do, we're going to go up to Grinnickers because I want to find the grave of the older mayor who has something to say in the front of this book. And he, it's really well written, very optimistic. Um, and I like, what, I like what he says, I just think it's interesting. I'm just wondering if, if it's... If what he, what he envisioned in 1949 is actually what's happened. He talks about the council being, you know, the tool of the public, if you like, and not the, not the council telling us how it is, but more the other way around. It's interesting that it doesn't seem to be that way anymore. But anyway, I'll read you his words when we get to his grave. And um, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to nip and do a bit of shopping and I'll be right back. Right, everyone, there's two pages I'm going to read for you. The first page and then the um, note from the mayor. But it says, In these pages will be found the story of the progress of a 100 years of municipal government and their long fight towards the goal of social achievement. Our labours, like those of our forefathers, continue to strengthen and ensure a heritage of prosperity and happiness for our children, so that as the citizens of tomorrow, they may be embedded with a great sense of civic pride as we ourselves are today. It then goes on with a foreword from Councillor Stott Thornton, Justice of the Peace, Mayor of Oldham, 1947-49. to And he writes... In the history of any municipality, many are the claims made for outstanding years of events, but 1949 must rank as a year preeminent in Oldham's history. 100 years in the life of a town which traces its history back to the 13th century may perhaps be regarded as a comparatively small period. But the years from 1849 to 1949 have been for Oldham high, highly important years of municipal growth and development. An historic period in which Oldham has reached an all-important position in the industrial north and with a civic administration of which we can justifiably, justifiably be proud of, which our forefathers commenced. The success story of any town rests not on its elected municipal re representatives and its corporation officials, but on the civic pride and enthusiasm of the individual men and women who make up its population. Oldham is your town. You, the ratepayers, can say how it should be administered and what amenities, educational, cultural, social and recreational, shall be provided. Much has been accomplished since 1849 when the borough received its charter of incorporation, but there is much to be done. There can be no finality in pausing to one of those of the past who have striven for a better social order. Many times it has been said that where there is no vision, the people perish, and that the right and privilege of which our forefathers so bitterly fought for are neither used nor appreciated. This is, however, an enlightened age, and I can confidently expect that the rising generation will be as keen to serve their town as their fathers and forefathers have been before them. As we embark on the second hundred years in a period which has been described as days of challenge, great social experiments and revolutionary change, I feel that the great admiration which already exists for the town's business and commercial activities and for the strength of its municipal and cultural institutions will further strengthen and that the same progressive policy will be followed with an equal vigour. The mayoress joins me in expressing the hope that many events especially arranged for the centenary year of 49, will not only bring some measure of happiness for all our citizens and visitors to Oldham, but will also provide inspiration for an even greater enthusiasm among all of those who will have the responsibility of developing the wider opportunities that lie before our beloved town. Finally, let me draw attention to our young men and women who take an interest in pride in our government of our town.
Yours faithfully, Stott Thornton, Mayor of Oldham, May 1949. Hello everybody. Um, I'm on my way back to Barnsley and I just stopped. Does anybody know where I am? This is the Moors Road, more commonly known these days as the Moors Murderers Road because this is the road that the filthy vile pigs that did those unspeakable acts in the 60s uh, used to come in the mini and um, I just wanted to show you what it looked like today it's enjoyed by a lot of people this area and as you can see it's stunning um, but I really like, look at all the heather I hope you can see that. Let me show you the road. To be careful because people fly up and down this road. But um, anyway, yeah. So this is the Moors, the Moors Road. This is the way that I come back to old, uh, back from Oldham now. When I go back home to Barnsley, I come down. I go through Old Firth and. Uh, I've been meaning to stop for ages and just haven't got around to it, but anyway, today I have, so... Oh, and there's been a bit of a development as well. I've decided it's time for... possibly time for a new car. Um, so I'm having a look around a few places. I actually went into my old place of work, this and Oldham. Um, but I'm just waiting for them to tweak the deal, we'll see. I'm also going to look at Mercedes as well. So, yes, I will keep you posted but uh yeah i just thought i wanted to show you all and uh yeah